I can call Roger if he doesn't jump on in a, in a minute. This is Austin. Everybody say hi to Austin. Aww. Hi, Austin. Hi, Austin. Hi, Austin. I'm like, what? Oh, what a cutie. I love that. Aww. Aww. Cutie. Aww. <laughs> it's kind of one of the benefits. This is one of the benefits to working from home and everything. So we get to spend more time with our pets. All right, Chair Stringfellow, you've got everyone. All right. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And Miranda, would you like to do a roll call? Yes, Chair Stringfellow. <laughs> Here. <laughs> well, Here. Vice Chair Mole. Here. Trustee Danforth. Here. Uh, board member Mahold. Here. And board member Giblin. I'm here. And please note for the record that we do not have board member Davenport and are not in need of either alternate Cornell or Fletcher. Okay. Thanks for scrolling that. Uh, we have any discussion before we approve the minutes for the January 14th meeting? I have nothing that was accurate. Nothing. Okay. I wasn't Anyone there, so I can't. Okay. Oh, I guess to that point, we are going to need alternate Cornell because you won't have enough to vote on the minute. Let me call him. Even with Karen here? <laughs> oh, I didn't see Karen was here. We're good. Hi, Karen. Karen's here. Hi, Karen. Nope, we're good. Okay. Okay. Alternate Karen, are you there? I am here. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no discussion, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of January 14th, 2021 BZA meeting? Yeah, I, I second. <clears throat> I make a motion. I second. We have a second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, anyone opposed or is anyone abstaining? I'll abstain. I wasn't there. I have okay. to. I abstain. I wasn't there either. Aye. Okay. Uh, the next item is an action item. It's the appointment of officers. At the January 14th meeting, uh, Mark Mark was available, and it was up to me to reach out to him to see if he wanted to continue to serve as vice chair. And if I could speak for you, Mark, you said you wanted to continue in that position. Yeah. So. And that would be for through June, is that correct, Miranda? That is correct. And then if um, Vice Chairman was to continue, then he could remain in that role if, if reappointed by the board. Of okay, do we need a motion on that? Yes, please. I make a motion. Well, does anyone else make a motion to keep Mark as vice chair through June? A motion to keep Mark Mole as vice chair through June. We have a I'll second. second it. Billy second it. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. So the next is our discussion item. So I had sent to you all in advance the this document, the vision statement, goals and objectives. There was also a YouTube video I had shared. It is this same document just read out loud for those who prefer to hear things um, read to them. But we wanted to just have a really informal conversation on if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about this document. Uh, 
I will tell you two. You have two BZA members are on the Envision board, so it's really Chair Stringfellow, Vice Chair Mole, um, Trustee Danforth, and Alternate Fletcher. If any of you have comments, because board members Giblin and Maholber are on the committee. Does anyone have any comments? I I already gave uh, written comments. I know about a year ago. So he and he's referring to the SWOT analysis, which is what the Envision 2030 committee reviewed to create this document. That's what you all did when we met in July of last year. And so while, while we are open to hearing your feedback tonight, I also want to let you know we're collecting it throughout the whole month of April. So if board members feel they need more time to review this document, you can email us feedback, submit it online, do a comment on Facebook or the YouTube video. There's lots of ways to, to get your feedback out there if you're not ready to comment tonight. Okay, that's great. What's the timeline you said through April for comments? Yeah, we're looking at all the comments completed by Friday, April 30th. And I can send reminder emails too if you all feel like you need a little bit more time. That would be great, Miranda. And in your packet too is a calendar. So if you're interested in maybe just a specific topic, like you want to know municipal government and economic development, what they're working on, you could attend the session that's just dedicated to that topic. Um, so that calendar is in your packet, and you would just email me for the meeting access. So, Mayor Tom, I don't know if you have anything else to add. It seems like maybe we'll we'll look to collect feedback in a different manner, unless you have something to chime in on. No, oh, just. I just encourage you to give feedback if you have it. So, I um, was there something in there about wildfires? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in I'd say in more than one section or one focus area, wildfire, uh, you know, just everything from education to mitigation to, you know, actual steps are, you know, touched on or you know talked about as you may know um was that mark mall who asked the question yes yeah so mark you probably know we're in the um uh, uh, wrapping up a cpa grant working on kind of a mitigation plan and strategy and looking uh closely at how we're you know and the fire department of course is is working with us on this as well but this has been a major focus for the town especially you know the wildfires we had last season just made it even more clear how we need to be better prepared um for any emergency but but definitely for wildfires yeah, I, I read a recent article in the Boulder Daily Camera that about a wildfire summit, and they touched on all kinds of stuff like you know. Yeah, like, you know, Mark, I actually attended that, and um, the attachment was included as part of my of our staff report. So okay. if you if you're interested in it, just gives the highlights. Um, right. But if you're interested in more, there's actually a couple more coming up. And so, um, if you're interested, I can send you those links. Well, um, let me think about it. The only, the, only, the only feedback I have is that they missed one item, <laughs> is that most wildfires are human caused. And not sure what we can do about that, but that's something that people should try to look into because if people didn't start fires, then we'd have a lot less fires. That, that is really true, um, Mark, and you probably know this, but we do have um, folks in the community who actually watch really closely what's going on in the campgrounds and in the dispersed camping areas and notify our fire department and our police department and 911 and such when they see things like this going on, but you're absolutely right. And the other thing is we do have a, um, the niche group actually hires uh, staff person who goes into the campgrounds and the dispersed camping areas in the summer 
and explains, you know, wildfire safety, if there's a fire ban and that sort of thing. But you're absolutely right. We, 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 we can definitely do more. And I know this was addressed in, in the Envision 2030, uh, but maybe not as robustly as you would like to see. So maybe if you could read through it and, and make suggestions and you can send those to Miranda and me, or um, you can also put it, you can comment right on the document, right. whatever makes you comfortable. Okay. You know, the, the outreach that you just mentioned is probably why we haven't had fires. Um, it's it's made a big difference. We're actually being uh, recognized throughout the state by this niche program where, um, you know, we have people actually going into the campgrounds to educate people, to redirect them, to let them know about the fire bans, and also to help them connect with uh, services, uh, like, you know, if they, they've got medical needs or, you know, we helped a family uh, last summer or the summer before, I'm sorry, who the woman was about ready to give birth and got her down to, you know, a hospital. And so it serves a lot of different purposes, but it definitely makes a difference in educating a lot of these campers who are transient and may not even understand how dangerous it is to have a fire. And especially when there's a fire ban and we're in the middle of a drought. Yeah, uh, apparently I, I, I uh, we have a place up in um, Grand County, and I was talking to some of the locals, and apparently the East Troublesome fire, they believe, was started by hunters. And that was the big fire that, you know, jumped the divide. Right. They, they actually are speculating it could have been the same thing here in Boulder County. They still oh, haven't been oh. able to determine exactly what it is, so it's just speculation, but that is one of the, um, one of the things they're looking into to see if it was um, hunters who accidentally started it. But as I said, it still has not been determined. It's still under investigation. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the input. We can move on. Are there any other comments about the discussion items here? I, I think uh, this is Trustee Danforth. Um, the only comment that I had, I, I made the other night at the Board of Trustees meeting um, about the Envision 2030 and the kind of goals and objectives. And, and I thought that the a lot of the goals that I see on there are very specific in nature. Um, you know, the one that I brought up in the meeting was about the building height, um, wanting it to be exactly 50 feet, but, you know, that leaves no room for us to have it say be 55 feet or 48 feet or, you know, some other height, because if we were using that to determine whether or not we're meeting goals or not, if we chose 55 feet, then we wouldn't have met our goal because we didn't make it 50 feet. So, you know, things, things like that, that I feel should be a little more, um, you know, general saying the town should review building height and make adjustments if desired. Um, and same thing with like, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say just really quick, the, um, it's Miranda. Last night, there was a really robust discussion about some of those economic development goals and how specific they were. And so I'm happy to report that team actually met and are working on revising them. But there's some really great feedback in a Word document that I'm gonna put in the chat. So you all can see that those goals that were very specific have been uh, made a bit more, um, oh, sorry, it's Cynthia's message. It has been made a little bit more broad and okay. I think will mirror what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of pervasive throughout the documents in each one of the groups. Um, sure. And, and, and sometimes I think it's just the the language, the word, if you swapped out one word, it wouldn't be as specific. Uh, so like one of them in the housing, it says allow for dwellings with low environmental impact, but we can't make that an objective to allow it. We should have the objective be to review the possibility of having these things. We, you know, it seems strange to me to say, I'll go ahead and allow it when this hasn't been anything that's been discussed. We don't know if everybody in town wants this. We, we, we have no idea. So it seems strange to make it the goal to allow it instead of to review it or discuss it. Um, and, and so trusting that, Dan that kind of language. I, I, the other yeah, thing I we talked about, and, and not so much last night, but we've been talking internally about this is that um, we'll probably, when, the, when we're getting close to being 
ready with the document, we will have somebody, you know, somebody who really is good at editing and, and writing to help pull that all together and, and address some of those things you're saying if they aren't addressed already through all of these various ways that people can um, communicate with us. But you're right, and that, that's been pointed out for sure. Yeah, hey, okay, great. This, yeah. This is Billy. Um, yeah, I thought a lot of that feedback, or at least the way it was kind of edited in, in the version we Miranda sent us as vision committee members listening. I thought those edits and the way they kind of generalized things were great, definitely. You know, and I think it'll be good that it'll be edited because really the reality is there's different people in each group and they either think about things differently or write things differently, but one person to kind of weave it together with a more consistent kind of perspective will be will be great. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And Tessie well, Gamberg, I don't know if you can see the screen, but this is the link I sent you. So as you can see, it kind of was, was broken up a bit and, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is what that subcommittee will adopt in its entirety, but you'll see that there was you know, at least for this section, and I hear what you're saying about the whole document, but there was a lot of concern about this section. There's been significant changes based on the feedback, and I think it shows the value of getting feedback and that it will really help us to pull this document together even better than it was to begin with. So please, email, I'll send you the link for all the ways in which you can engage. There's nine different ways to give feedback. So I'll send you the link to the Envision page and you can provide it there in forms or you're welcome to swing by Town Hall. Um, as uh, Billy said, it would just be nice to get all your feedback on this document. Okay, thanks, Miranda. Miranda, that'll help. Uh, if there's no other discussion, can we move on to the town staff report? Sure, if you guys are ready, I'm ready. This Karen, I'm going to see if my I can use my video and not freeze up. Let's see. So far, so good. Well, we'll see. Miranda, just let me know or turn off my video if I start freezing or whatever. Um, do. So, yeah. So it's been a while since we talked to you, and um, in our staff reports this quarter, we are recognizing our long-term employees who have been here for us. Marshall Johnson uh, 19 years and he is an amazing face for our community. He's such an excellent police officer. He really gets our community and he's always willing and ready to help out whether you need your car pulled out of a ditch or uh, there's uh, someone who is on a suicide watch or there's a teen doing risky behavior. He's there, he's kind, um, and he is really such a great asset and such a wonderful member of our team. Also recognizing Don Baumhover. Um, I can't see that, that part of the report, but I think she's been with us 15 years maybe, um, but she's uh, been with us for a long time and she, yeah, 13 years. So she's been with us over 13 years. And maybe what a lot of people don't know that she does for the town, in addition to just being an amazing um, manager for the community center, she also is very critical to our emergency preparedness and response team. She um, helps to activate our emergency shelter when it's needed and did so, of course, um, when we had the Cold Springs fire and then uh, we also activated the space during the wildfires this season and we were helping people who were coming all the way from the Trevelson fire and heading all the way to Gilpin for lodging because the fires had spread so far um, we were a stopping point and we were helping people with everything like where do you put your pets and livestock and where can you get dog food and water and, and lodging and that type of thing. And she just does such a great job in that. She's really well trained. She also is a huge advocate for the arts and culture community. So we really value her. Um, the third person that we're recognizing is Chris Pellet here. I think he's in his maybe 12th year. Let's see, what does that say? Oh, no, he just celebrated his 10th anniversary. And um, he, of course, 
is has such a technical aptitude and such a great knowledge of our town's infrastructure. But in addition to that, um, what you might not know is that he is amazing at getting us grant money. And in the time I've been here, the, uh, he has secured over $2.5 million in grant revenue for the town, him and his team. So he's just a critical member. I also give a shout out to Cynthia Bake. She, of course, is our deputy zoning administrator. You guys know her well. Um, she is the next person closest to reaching that uh, first decade with us. And then Eric and Milky, he goes by email. He works at the community center. He's been with us for um, seven years. So we really thank those folks, their um, institutional knowledge and uh, their, their sense of the community is extremely valuable. The other thing I wanted you guys to know that you might be interested in is uh, town staff had taken a water rights 101 training with our um, water attorney. And we uh, I offered that to the board of trustees if they wanted to have that. And so we are going to have a work session which the public can attend and listen in to uh, their second meeting in May, which I think is May 16th, is that correct? Yes, yeah, May 16th. So you all are invited as well because I get these questions all the time, you know, what are we doing in our water rights? And the bottom line is that we, we have uh, senior and junior water rights totaling 39.6 acre feet that we're allowed to use annually. Right now we're using between 16 and 17 acre feet annually. So we're positioned really well. We also have 100, oh, sorry, it's May 18th is the meeting. We also have a hundred um, acre feet of conditional water rights, which we uh, go through a due diligence period every six years to show that we're uh, uh, working on retaining those and then eventually storing them. So anyways, if you're interested in learning more about the town's water rights, you are invited to attend that. I think the next thing on the, what's, what's next month after that? I, uh, I'm just, this is uh, Tom Mahold. I'd like to be included in that meeting on the 18th. Sure, you just, you'll be in, anybody can sign up. It'll be publicly posted, just like Good. any other board of trustee meetings. Mm -hmm. It'll be like that and anybody can sign up. You won't be able to talk because right. it's a work session, but you'll be able to listen. So you'll hear all of the exchange. You'll hear the same information that the board of trustees is here. 16, 30, 18. 18. It's actually the 18th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so it's the second meeting of the month. And I think you guys all know that's the third Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. And then as I talked earlier, I attended the wildfire summit that was um, hosted by our Congressman Joe Nagus. And it was really interesting because a lot of the focus was on watershed protection. And so there was a lot of great information in it. I won't go into details. There is an attachment to this um, that you can look at regarding the highlights. And I do think it also gives you a way you can link to the uh, you can link you can link to the full meeting if you want to. For the COVID update. Uh, this one is uh, pretty recent, but the, I'm not, not going to go through all of it, but the, the bottom line is that we are seeing increases in our numbers. We actually are over 5% now in our incident rate, which is pretty high compared to where we were even a couple weeks ago. Um, but they're attributing this to, you know, uh, as everybody knows, some of the restrictions have been uh, reduced. Uh, people don't even have to wear masks anymore outside, although it's still recommended. Um, there's more capacity in uh, the restaurants and whatnot and gyms. And then schools are back in session. The goal this uh, for the state was to get as many K-12 through kids back in school after spring break as possible. And a lot of the school districts accomplished that. It might not be five days a week, it might only be four days a week, but because kids are back in school um, and the university is also doing more in-person classes, we expected to see the increase, 
of course, we're watching it closely because we don't, if, if it goes to a certain level, Boulder County is going to institute their own dial because come April 16th, the public health orders, which right now are on a dial metric, which was put together by the state, um, that is going to lapse on April 16th. Mark, is there a way you could mute yourself because it's just making a lot of extra noise? What, me? Yeah. Oh. Can you mute? I, I'll, okay, I wasn't making any noise, but it was Billy. It, 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 it picks up paper. It picks up. It picks up everything. Anyways, um, uh, so because those pu public health orders are going to lapse April sixteenth, what that means is that the state is no longer going to put statewide orders out there. What's going to happen instead? is each county or municipality that has its own public health department will be instituting their own public health orders. Boulder County is working on that right now and they're actually gonna take it to their board, I believe on Monday next week. It's going to be very similar to the dial that is currently in place, although there will be less restrictions, but Boulder County is feeling like, you know, we're seeing these increases in incidents and especially in the younger population and they wanna be able to track it and they are not going to release all restrictions as quickly as some parts of the state. So, you know, stay tuned. We, we keep information like this. Um, I'm always reporting to all the boards and commissions. I report to the, of course, to the board of trustees on this. We post really important information on our Facebook page and the website. Um, but just know that it's likely that Boulder County will ha will be more restrictive than um, some areas of the state. But we have, you know, we have loosened some restrictions. We've got businesses operating. We've still been able to maintain only, you know, the lowest number in the county of incidents. Uh, and, and I'm talking percentages. So we have 25 confirmed cases in Netherlands, which is just unbelievable. And, um, and that's even after we started the testing uh, clinics up here. And I also wanted to talk about the vaccination. So vaccinations are going super well in, um, in Boulder County. Uh, we've got something like 46% of the population, the adult eligible population has received at least one dose. Over 90% of people over 70 are fully inoculated. Uh, I think the the group over 60 is something like 60%. Uh, so we're doing super, super well um, in, in that case. And we do also have a vaccination clinic up here in Netherland. We are in partnership with Boulder County Public Health as well as Boulder Community Health. And we were, were just opening it to the very, very most vulnerable. So people over 70, people with disabilities, people who were homebound. But what's kind of exciting is that um, we were able to get some J&J &J one shot vaccines. So the next clinic, we've got room for some extra people. So uh, they're putting a call out through Netherland area seniors and through some of our nonprofit partners to um, for, to first go to people, I think 60, 65 and older, that kind of thing. Um, but then if we have uh, and essential workers, which includes, you know, government employees and elected officials and volunteers. So that would include all of you. So if any of you have not had a vaccine and you're interested in it, you could email me and I can hook you up with them and we'll see if they have any more openings. So that's really good news. And that's, this shows our strong partnership with Boulder County and, uh, and thankfully Boulder Community Health who is willing to provide the staff and the vaccines to make this happen for us. I think that, I can't remember what's after uh, the COVID update. It might be you, Miranda. Oh, Karen. no. Karen. Yeah? Karen? This yes. is Karen Fletcher. Sure, oh, hi. Question, hi. Um, for information after April 16th, is there a place where a business like mine 
I could go in and put in my email address. And as things change, I could get notified because if, I mean, I don't really want to go checking websites three times a day to see if something's changed or even every day. It would just be nice if the people that make the changes could send that information out to the businesses that need to know it. Well, I know Miranda has been um, texting and emailing the businesses in town whenever there's a, a, a public health Change, a, a public health order change that affects their businesses. So if you haven't heard from her, then nothing has changed since the last time you heard from her. Miranda, okay. do you want to? Yeah, no, yeah. and to that point, Karen, I can uh, make sure obviously to, to be to keep you in the loop. I did create a lister for all businesses um, where I could send, when I get messages, I can send them out. But to Karen's point, there hasn't been much to report, um, but I'll be sure to have you in that loop. The other option would be, um, there's a couple kind of bolder, like a um, so like a bolder chamber type of listserv that goes around and they have some great emails that break it up by business type and there's even webinars for that. And so I can connect with her and see what the best one might be for you to maybe sign up for. And they're not overwhelming. You'll just kind of get them as needed. Oh, that would be great. And and Karen, so basically what happened is when we as a county shifted into the blue level, we have not gone out of that. So we've been in that for weeks. Um, and part of the reason is our numbers started to go down and it looked like we might be shifting into the less restrictive yellow level, but then we started to increase again. So we haven't shifted at all, but but um, you know, as we as we're saying, we we notify the businesses. We do want to make sure that you guys know um, if, especially if if they're getting more restrictive. But we're also notifying if there's less restrictions. Hey, I appreciate that. Sure, you bet. Um, and then the Mountain Community Health Task Force, if you all haven't heard about this, I'm just super, super excited about it. Um, I was invited to be on this team and it's like one of my very favorites because what we're doing is we're doing. Pardon? Oh, sorry. We're working with uh, Clinica, Clinica Family Health. Um, they, we've been actually talking to them for a couple years about trying to bring um, some sort of health services up into the peak to peak region. And they were able to secure a grant, which is um, funding this exploration we're doing right now, where we're um, going to, well, we've got a community engagement team. I'm actually on that team and we're gonna start interviewing stakeholders and community leaders. And then also going to be reaching out to the general public to assess the need and um, get feedback. And then uh, we'll also have a data group that's looking at the data in the area having to do with all the demographics and, and, and that sort of thing. And then we have um, a, uh, team working on challenges and opportunities. The The short story though is that uh, we're hoping to be able to start some telehealth um, services up here sooner rather than later, like this summer, and then eventually hopefully actually be able to help Clinica open a facility that would be somewhere in either Gilpin County or the um, mountain area of Boulder County. So uh, very, very excited about that and um, looking forward to the continuing partnership with Clinica, they're amazing. With community development, we've been, we still stay very busy um, even though there's a pandemic and it's, it, you know, we're dealing with so much of it virtually and online. We've just figured out a way to make that work and um, still seeing a lot of submissions for building permits and um, and whatnot. So still very active. And then, I don't know, Miranda, would you like to share the public work updates? Um, I really just put it in the, the staff report so you all can read. I'm not necessarily the expert to speak to public works, but obviously they always have things going on and I feel like there's benefit in sharing those. So I re recommend that you take some time and review that and then reach out to Chris if there are any questions. Great. Uh, back to Clinica for a second. Uh, Karen, sure. um, how long does the grant go for? 
Well, the grant is just for the feasibility study that we're doing. No, this committee, this task force to do a feasibility okay. study. Um, and I think that's, we've got the, I think the funding is going to last through maybe October. Um, okay. And they do actually have a couple paid people uh, who, mountain people, who are working part time on the task force to sort of herd the cats and and gather the information. And then Clinica has uh, several people who are on the task force as well. Um, it, but it, it's just super exciting because they're very interested in doing it. They have the capacity because they continue to grow. I mean, they've grown, yeah. grown from being like this people's clinic down in Boulder for decades is to, to several of these clinicas um, in, in uh, I think it's Denver, Boulder and Adams County now. Um, and they so they have the capacity, the interest and potential federal funding on their own that they could utilize, whether it's some mobile services or tele or uh, the facility. Of course, what we all want, what we're all hoping is that we end up with an actual clinic up here. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the grant? application clinica. clinica did okay that's great fabulous yeah there there are the leads on it because they were the ones who would be qualified to get it mm -hmm. the funding that's great thanks for letting us know sure i'm super excited about it okay well that was a great staff report um is there any other business we need to talk about tonight This wasn't the world's shortest BZA, but pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no other business, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Matt. Okay. And Miranda lost internet. We've been having some internet issues. So um, we could do a roll call or just everybody could say aye. 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 Any nays? Sincerely, <laughs> okay. no. It's unanimous. Hey. Hey, congratulations, Karen. Oh, Your thank you. Yes. Coming up. Yeah, That's but awesome. you know, I'm still, I'm still going to be here for like five months, so you're not rid of me yet. I'm really excited. And there's certain things I, I still want to be very involved in. I'm going to stay on that mountain um, community health task force and some of the other We're task doing force. That. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, so, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thanks all. Okay. Thank good you. night. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night.